reason why I'm veering off of different things, one is talking about not letting anyone get in between a marriage, to making sure that you're connected, is because Hashem told us that to erase his name is a very, very big problem. But you're allowed to erase my name for Shlom Bait. So he is telling you that Shlom Bait is extremely important for him. Shlom Bait is the Torah. In order for someone to be successful in Judaism and in, in general in life, he has to have Shlom Bait. So much so that a man that has an evil wife is guaranteed Olam Abba. Mm -hmm. Because he gets hell already in this life. This is not uh, theoretical or a joke. I'm telling you that's serious. He gets a lot, a lot. Olam Abba, he gets Gan Eden. Someone that has an evil wife in this world, he lives with her his whole life. Not he divorced after a year. I'm talking about someone that lived with an evil wife his whole life. And vice versa, obviously, a woman that had an evil husband is guaranteed Gan Eden. So one time there was a guy where his wife was so special that every day that he would come home, as soon as he would come home, she would immediately start screaming at him for some reason or another, and she would throw up one of her slippers at him. Every day. Every day, as soon as he came home, she would throw one of her slippers at him. Nightmare. Not fun. Every day he gets hit with a slipper or a shoe or something. Violent woman. So he decides to go to his Rav. I forgot the name of the Rav, but it was, it's a real story. It's not a joke. Um, his Rav was a big rabbi. He's one of the Gdolea I just I don't want to say the wrong name. He goes to his Rav. He says, I can't do it. I cannot do it. I cannot be with this woman for one more day. I've been with her for, I think, 15 or 20 years already. One more day, I can't do it. You have to give me a get. This is not after a week or a month. This is, he's been getting shoes on his head for 20 years. So Rabbi, it's a very special Rabbi. It wasn't an ordinary Rabbi. He goes, okay. Just wait in my living room for a little while. I'm going to get some paperwork. I'll be back in a little while. Okay. So he leaves in 15 minutes, half hour. Eventually what happens when you have nothing to do? You fall asleep. So the man tells the story of what happens when he falls asleep. He falls asleep and he has a dream. He has a dream that he goes up to Shammai and he's in front of the three Dayanim. He's in front of the three judges. And they give him the Cheshbon. They give him pretty much his accounting of what he did in his life. And he said, yeah, okay, so you did some mitzvot. But let's see all your avirot, all of your sins. And they have a scale. And he starts seeing that the scale of the sins that he made is getting a little heavy, a little heavy, a little heavy. And it's a little more than his mitzvot. So then one of the judges turns around and he says, bring, bring, this, bring the shoes. Mm. And they start putting all of the shoes, all, every slipper that he got, <laughs> December 1st, he got this, <laughs> December 2nd, he got this. Everywhere, every day, they put all on the scale of the mitzvot. All the way to the point where the scale is even. Whoa. The sins and the mitzvot are exactly even. Mm. That's when he wakes up. Oh, and actually, before he woke up, they told him, ah, all you needed is one more, and you have Gan Eden. And that's when he wakes up. So he wakes up, he sees the rabbi. The rabbi's like, okay, so you ready? He goes, no, 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 I'm not right. I, I need to go home right now. I need to go home right now. He needs one more. He spent the rest of his life with this woman. Another story was the... Uh, this one guy had a, uh, not the best wife, and uh, every day she would do whatever she can to torture the guy, poor guy. So, one day, 
they go to uh, Shur Torah, and you know, there's a big nest, they go to Shur Torah, and the rabbi says, a man that has an evil wife is guaranteed a lava. So the, uh, the husband is at least thinking to himself, ah, at least that, that oh Hashem. <laughs> so he goes home, and the next day, wakes up, and it's, Gets to uh, you know he's about to go to work and he passes the kitchen he sees his wife cooking already honey I made you breakfast breakfast okay he eats it fine goes okay see you later gives him a hug leaves he comes back and uh, at, you know later that night he's got instead of a shoe he's got dinner everything is great he's got, she went crazy this woman one day two days three days four days. This is going on for a week already. He's losing his mind. He's like, What's, what happened to this lady? What, does she all change her life? I don't understand. Yes, I don't know. So he goes, he goes, he goes, talks to his rabbi. He goes, listen, I think my wife is cheating on me or something. I don't know what's going on because she completely, uh, my whole life she's, you know, torturing me. All of a sudden, she's nice. I don't know what's going on. So can you talk to her, please? So he goes, okay, okay. So he tells his wife, please. Go see the rabbi, he wants to see you. You know, in those days they respected the rabbi. So the rabbi wants to see you, they go see him. Not today, like, oh no, let him, tell him to text me. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes to Rav, and Rav, you know, asks a bunch of questions, and then she says, Yeah, listen, you know, your husband says that you changed a little bit in the last week. He goes, Yes, exactly, I did change. You know, why, why, why did you change? Because, but I heard, because I heard that if. My husband has a bad wife, he'll have a lama ba. He goes, okay, so why did that make you change? He goes, over my dead body, he's going to have a lama ba. <laughs> so, the, uh, the point of the story is, make sure you're very careful who you pick. <laughs> make sure you're very careful.